Well, welcome to sunny Palma, Mallorca for Yossi Munsky's test of the Beneteau Sense 46. So we'll start at the bow, as ever. It's a big, chunky, cruising double roller here with the, the windlass set on the port one. You also notice there's a, a, a tang in front of the forestay, and that's for the Code Zero, which is on here at the moment. And uh, when we were running a cruising sheet yesterday, it was just straight through the starboard roller, the tack line, and just up onto the sheet, and that's fine. You have to tack inside, but uh, it's all doable. And a very big anchor locker here. Plenty of room for chain in there, and the recessed windlass with, with drum. Flush hatches, very nice. And you'll also notice these pad eyes here, which are great for putting your halliers on when they're not being used, or maybe strapping down a dinghy or something. Lovely tow rails, nice um, fairing on the stanchion bases there. And this model uh, has the, doesn't have it fitted, but there is a self-tacker option for this one. So moving off, there's a bit of a swing past the, the top side chain plates. Um, you'll notice this, I, I wonder if they might, might be better on there. It was, um, we couldn't get desperately close winded yesterday. The sails aren't desperately well cut on this boat, but I just thought if the track was there, then you might end up with the sort of pointing you get with a self-tacker. These I think are a bit too far in board, so if I'm walking up the high side, then I'm pretty much, I'm about to launch down. Um, moving back, great non-slip here. And there's another grab rail here, just to see you safely into the cockpit. So you see all the lines ducted aft. These are some of the sail controls, the main sheet's over there on this winch over there. So you've got Harkin 46s here. Uh, this is the only non-electric one in the cockpit. And these are Harkin 50s for the, the jib sheets and the spinnaker sheets and that sort of thing. Here you've got your 360 docking control. There's the uh, electronic throttle. And here is the helm station, which I rather like. So you can sit here, it's a bit too far away to kind of, you can just about reach the wheel from there. But I found my favorite position was just sitting here with this block under me and just looking up the side. Obviously sitting there, the view is not quite as good forward. Um, so there's the wheel, it's a uh, chain and cable steering, twin rudders, so you've got individual posts there and that's uh, kind of a, an inspection and maintenance hatch in the middle. Um, grab rails here, very good for moving around. You've got all this stowage under here. So there's a big locker there. There's your bathing ladder there. Another big locker there. Here's your life draft locker. And this is a nice detail for people who don't like um, open cockpits. Just rises on a gas strut to close off the cockpit. Very nice. For more security when you're at sea, obviously these flip down. And you've got these very nice little connectors that just run out of one seat into the other. There you are, closed. There's two more there. Nice little detail. Well thought out. So moving forward, we've got another excellent grab rail here. It looks like it should have a table on it, but it is just a grab rail. It's something to brace against because it is quite a wide cockpit. The table for me is a bit, a bit fiddly to get round. Um, that's just me, but you have got a section here, so it's kind of it's more useful when uh, when you're lunching. Also got these big cockpit lockers here. 
The theory on this boat is that the accommodation and all the systems are separate. So the generators here, that's the generator there. Uh, you've got the, all the water pumps, all that sort of thing is aft in the boat. So the forward, you're not getting that noise. I'm sure we've all stayed in berths where there's a water pump under the fires up in the middle of the night and it's all very annoying. This boat is concepted to get away from that. So there's a the generator, it's got the raw, raw water filter and the fuel filter outside the box it's in, the soundproof box, so it's easier maintenance. So you've got the gas lugger over here, that's that one. And in here, we've got, so there there's the water manifold and all the pumps, associated pumps, that's all at the back there. Um, aft, there's access to the quadrant, the, the port quadrant at least, more access to starboard. There are also panels under here that give you access to the back of the sail drive. Let's say this one's got the 360 docking, which is um, you know, a sort of rotating sail drive, so there's access to that from down there. Not tremendously good access, but it's there. And then below this grey sole is the fuel tank. This boat's got two fuel tanks, one under each cockpit locker. Um, that's the deck stowage. So it's great on vision, this boat, amazing visibility, but um, these are quite big, I'm not sure they kind of... They do feel very private, and there's no way of blacking them out. <clears throat> so coming below, got these great grab rails here, uh, and it's just a big, wow, the amount of light around these huge windows and big hatches and stuff, and it's, uh, it's a lovely place to be. Anyway, moving into the galley, there's a tiny, tiny cool box there. You can sort of reach the bottom very easily. <coughs> uh, but the main fridge is there. Lots of storage. There's a cutlery drawer, for instance, all neatly arranged. Nice three burner stove with grill here. There's an extractor fan there. And of course, you get ventilation through this. Um, great, the whole ports are a perfect size for sitting down, but when you're standing at the galley, this view is sensational. Uh, twin sinks, more stowage outboard, fiddled stowage, very nice. And you've also got these little pot holders there for your olive oil and so on. Uh, see, this is really handy, I think, for bracing against. Um, a lot of people are not fans of the linear system. I think this works really well. So over here, starboard off, we've got the chart table. There's a little seat here that sort of flips up and that pops out. So if you're on the starboard tack, that'll keep you comfy. Um, it's actually surprisingly big. It'll be quite effective for, uh, for a chart table. There's not much in the way of a view, but um, you've got everything you need. There's a chart plotter there, all the switch panels here. There's loads and loads of storage there. So you can get your um, almanacs and all that sort of thing in here. And lots of stowage in there, so you've got stowage under there, and also in there. So you've got all your battery switches under here, and uh, the electric breakers for the electric winches and the windlass. So that's kind of tech corner. Coming around here into the saloon, uh, there's some stowage under here. You've got the base spin for the Bose system here. There's more stowage under here, and you've got the air conditioning compressor under the forward seating. This table swings round and opens for, for dining and it also drops down to act as like a coffee table. So you can see these, you just undo one of those, it drops down to sort of coffee table level, which is vital. Um, you've also got, so we were thinking underway, we were thinking handholds. Because uh, there aren't many in this area, there's nothing on here, there's nothing in the deck head. So we're thinking there's one there, and that also gives the galley chef something to rest their bottom on. Um, and here we have the extra seating. So with the table opened up, you could happily sit six or seven around there. So that's very clever, we do particularly like that, that's a lovely detail, although this needs a lock, I think, we can imagine just sort of banging into it. <coughs> um, so there we have it, some lockers here, 
fiddle again with a, a nice bar in them, stop things falling out. And of course, late at night, you've got your little aperitif there. You can just watch some TV. So this is unusual, we've got these windows here in the, uh, the saloon bulkhead, and they do act to kind of open the space up enormously, so you know, it's just kind of, you can see through that window there, and it lets more light in, and it lets more light into the head, it works really well. So this crab rail, and this one here, moving off. Day heads in here, it's got some stowage under there, and some sea cocks, which might be quite hard to get at. Um, some tank there, and some stowage there. And this is the, uh, the heads, for the mid cabin, which is here. Uh, so, yes, it's uh, got its own shower. So you've got the day head over here, they've got the shower here. Um, presumably you know each other if you're in a double bed. This place is like this. I think there's a bit of a gap there, so maybe if you're a bit messy, you might end up getting some of your joinery wet. And I'm not sure about this. That uh, looks like a sharp edge for my, for my hip. Some storage under here. You've got a split hanging and shelved locker here. Uh, there's another locker here and drawers under the cabin, more lockers there. Some good, so you've got a small hatch here above the shower for ventilation there, there's another small one there and a hole port which kind of brightens up the place. We like this as well, this is this Alpi woodwork with the, the white vinyl. Classy. So forward cabin, nice little durade vent there for all weather ventilation. And a nice little uh, towel hook. So that's, I think it's the first time I've seen one on a boat. Uh, shower here, got the ventilation above. This door folds out, but it's kind of low. Like I think if I'm washing my hair, then maybe I'll soak everything. Uh, it doesn't particularly matter because this section here drains into the shower sump, so you hit the button there and that'll drain everything. Um, some good cabin lights, LEDs throughout on this one, and a nice hole port for, uh, for light. Got some storage under there and also behind this. So, that's the ensuite suite to the forward cabin, which is definitely the owner's cabin, so I don't know if this is a boat you're supposed to sail overnight on. If it was, you'd probably want to hunger down in the saloon, because this obviously won't be very nice in the seaway. Nice forward hatch here for ventilation, you get very good light from the hull ports as well. Um, stowage is a bit of a mixed bag, so there's a, a locker down, a drawer down there. We've got lockers here, hanging locker there. There's some more stowage under the berth, um, aft of the bow thruster and then the water tank. Three water tanks on this boat, one there, two under the saloon sole. Uh, some more stowage under the berth there. Generally, I think it's just, it's really, it's, it's lovely. Again, you've got this, the LP and the white vinyl. I think it just creates a really nice ambiance. Very light, you've got the mirror at the end to bounce the light around. I think it's a, it's a lovely place to be able to be happy with this boat. Uh, well, we went out twice. We went out yesterday and it was kind of grey and it had been quite windy in the early afternoon but by the time we got out it was like 10 knots of wind and there was still quite a sloppy sea running. Um, but we made about 40 degrees to the apparent wind, about 9 to 11 knots of apparent wind and 4.7 to 5.2 knots upwind. Uh, coming down onto a fetch, about 60 degrees to 12 to 16 knots of apparent wind, 5.7 to 7.3. Um, down on a beam reach, uh, 7 to 8 knots of apparent wind, uh, 5.8 to 6.1, and then coming down to a broad reach, about 4.5 knots of apparent wind, 3.9 to 4.2. So it, it didn't feel desperately good. There wasn't much feel in the helm, but that's because it's a twin rudder boat. It's also quite heavy with the, the autopilot, but it was just kind of unsatisfactory. And then we went out again this morning, which was glorious. So we had, uh, I guess, about 15, 16 knots of true wind. Um, 35 de degrees to the apparent wind, we managed to get that much closer because the sea was flatter. 17 to 21 knots of apparent wind, 6.8 to 7.6 knots upwind. Um, down the fetch, 17 to 19 knots of apparent wind, 8.1 to 9 knots. Beam reaching, 12 to 19 knots of apparent wind, 7.5 to 9.4. And coming down, again this is white sail reaching, 120 to 150, 13 to 14 knots of apparent wind, 7.4 to 7.7. .7. Those are pretty decent passage-making figures, I'd say. Um, but the, the concept of this boat is... Beneteau did a lot of research into how people use boats, and they realised that a lot of them don't go out 
<laughs> much. So this one is a wonderful liverboard, I think. You've got the owner's cabin forward, which again tends to suggest that, you know, overnight passages, you'll probably be sleeping here just in a pile of berth with a lee cloth, maybe. Um, <coughs> But as a liverboard, as somewhere you, a boat you keep somewhere and day sail to places, it's absolutely spot on. This is fabulously bright. Um, the layout's marvellous. You've got all the noisy stuff back here, so it's very quiet up forward. Um, it's great. I, I see. It, I didn't see it as particularly kiddie friendly because uh, there's one cabin there. Um, maybe for kids of kind of school leaving age, or you have uh, friends that want to come out and see you. Brilliant. So if you're keeping it in the med, you know, you come out for weekends or a week and you stay forward and you can invite friends out and take it around. Uh, it's not a cheap boat. 460,500 460, euro, including tax, for this boat, which has everything on it. It's got the generator back there, it's got the extra fuel tank, extra water tank, it's got the air conditioning, it's got the stereos in every cabin, Four, uh, three chart plotters. There's a lot on this boat. Um, and 460. 460,500 euros, probably 410,000 sterling. Um, that's a lot of money for the boat it is, but uh, it's you know it's 46 foot boat, makes decent speeds. It's incredibly comfortable. Um, build quality is you know it's it's good for Benito. It's not quite up to the you know the Swedish boat builder standards, but it's pretty solid. It'll take a, a few years of uh, few years of living um, very happily, I think. I love it. I love the idea. I love the idea of having all the living space for this fabulously bright area, all that stuff after which could be tricky to maintain, but that's going to be someone else's job, I figure. You're not going to be in there checking everything every day. Uh, I really like it. I think it's a great concept. I think uh, their research has paid off. And for people who don't you know, want to go around Cape Horn, but just want someone to turn up at the weekend, potter about, I think she's absolutely stunning.